motion and time pendulum motion time period length of string we measure time in days months and years what is a day it is the time taken by the earth to complete one rotation around itself what is a month it is the time taken by the moon to complete one revolution around the earth what is a year it is the time taken by the earth to complete one revolution around the sun so there is basically some repetitive motion that we are counting to measure time motion that keeps repeating after a certain time is called periodic motion how do we measure time in a clock again we count the repetitions of periodic motion in different clocks it is done in different ways the easiest to understand is the grandfather clock the pendulum keeps swinging back and forth and from that the clock keeps time let's understand a pendulum properly a pendulum is basically a weight tied to one end of a string and the other end of the string is fixed somewhere so that the weight can hang down that's all there is now let's study the pendulum set it in motion you'll see that it goes back and forth so it shows oscillatory motion these oscillations keep repeating again and again after a fixed time so it is also periodic motion let's look at the motion closely when the pendulum is not moving you see it in a certain position we call this position the mean position let's label it as m when you give the pendulum a push it starts swinging back and forth the maximum that it goes to each side is called the extreme position there is one extreme position on each side let's label those as a and b the pendulum keeps moving from side to side how do you calculate the oscillations Basically you can start at any point and wait till the bob of the pendulum comes back to that point but then everyone would count differently so scientists have fixed the method of counting one oscillation start from the mean position which is m then go to an extreme position say a then come back to the mean position m Does that complete an oscillation? No. Why not? Well, when you started from M, the bob was moving in this direction. Right now, at M, the bob is moving in this direction. So, it's at the same point but not in the same motion. So we go to the other extreme position B and then back to M again. Now, The bob is moving in the same direction that it started in and also at the same position so that completes one oscillation so m a m b m is one oscillation you can calculate the time taken for one oscillation that is called the time period look how fast a pendulum moves it makes oscillations so quickly counting one oscillation is quite hard so what can you do you can count the time taken for about say 30 oscillations and then 
divide the total time by 30. Then you would get the time period for one oscillation. That is how the time for one oscillation is measured properly. Now, there's an interesting thing. Pull the pendulum to this extreme position and then let go and find the time period. Now, pull the pendulum to this extreme position and then let go and find the time period. You will find that the time period is the same in both the cases. Basically, a pendulum has a fixed time period. It doesn't matter what the extreme position is. The time period of the pendulum only changes when the length of the pendulum changes. When the length is longer, the time period is more. That means the pendulum takes more time for an oscillation. When the length is shorter, the time period is lesser. That means the pendulum takes lesser time for an oscillation. A simple pendulum takes 32 seconds to complete 20 oscillations. What is the time period of the pendulum? When we have to calculate the time period, we have to find the time taken for one oscillation. Set up the cross multiplication. Time for one oscillation is equal to 32 divided by 20. Therefore, the time taken for one oscillation is equal to 1.6 seconds. Therefore, the time period of the pendulum is equal to 1.6 seconds. You know that a grandfather's clock that has the pendulum moving to keep time. What gets the pendulum moving? It does not need an external push. There is a weight attached to a string. When you wind the clock, the weight rises up and then falls down very slowly. As it falls, it loses potential energy and this gets transferred to the gears. But, you know that things fall down too fast. You want the weight to go down very slowly. This is where the pendulum steps in. When it swings, it rocks a lever, escapement, which makes the gear trains move forward a very small amount with each swing. In other words, the escapement locks and unlocks the controlling mechanism, gear train, to let the weight escape or fall once per second. It is this locking and unlocking of the gear train by the escapement that produces the characteristic tick-tock sound we've all come to generally associate with clocks. Once the weight has fallen down the entire height, it must be wound back to its starting position. The time required for winding a pendulum clock varies according to its internal design. For instance, a clock with a heavier weight can store more potential energy and can therefore run longer than a lightweight clock before any winding is required. There are some variants of pendulum clocks, such as the aptly named 400-day clock or anniversary clock, which runs for a year before needing to be rewound.